1955, a 19-year-old singer from Belfast set a record that has not been equaled in the music industry. She had five songs in the hit parade in the same week. Her name was Ruby Murray, and she became the darling of teenagers all over the UK. She topped popularity polls as often as she topped the bill in London's biggest venues, and she had the most exquisite voice. Frank Sinatra once said she was the, the greatest girl singer he had ever heard. She had that lovely kind of a, um, that's that sort of a soft burr in her voice. It was that pure crystal. It was just beautiful. A very quiet and very husky voice when she spoke. You you were inclined to say you've got a bad cold, and, and a tremendous sense of humour. Because I don't think she really could take herself too seriously. So there was always that self-deprecating kind of humour and, you know, they, don't worry, they frisked me on the way in and everybody <laughs> laughs and she said, well, I can't enjoy it, I might get them to frisk me on the way out, you know. I never toured with her, but I knew her very well and I loved her. Tenderly, softly, softly, turn the key. Once in the dear dead days beyond recall, when on the world the mist began to fall out of the dreams that rose in happy throng low to our hearts love sang an old sweet song and in the dusk when fell the firelight gleams softly it was Ruby Murray was born in Belfast in March 1935 and was singing from a very early age, encouraged by her father who was an amateur concert promoter. By the age of 12 she was topping the bill in his concerts and she was spotted by a BBC television producer from London, Richard Afton, who would have whisked her away there and then to stardom had it not been for the fact that she was so young. Ruby left school at 14 to go more or less full time into the music business. On one show, she met up with Mary Cunningham, who was to become her accompanist and her lifelong friend. We met together at a rehearsal in town here for a show that was going to Bundorn for the, for the season. And uh, Ruby and I just, just struck it up right away and uh, we're inseparable. The summer season in Bundorn led to more work and variety around the province as well as a six month run in a show in Glasgow for which Ruby lied about her age to get the part. At this point impresario Philip Solomon got in on the act. I suggested to Philip Solomon I said you should have you want a girl because I used to come here, crack a couple of gags, and the, the place was packed, then like Connie on, not too late. So I said, we'll bring Ruby Murray. And he said, uh, she's too young. She was about 14 or 15. I said, no, you, you, you've got to take her on. We took her on, and she did better than, than Connie Foley in the top of the bill. Let him sing or let him swim. He doesn't care for me, or I don't care for him. We were in Tralee, with the tour was only going a few weeks. She was on singing, and Philip dashed in, he said, where's Ruby? <laughs> it was about half past nine at night. I said, she's singing, can you not hear her? He said, get her off. And I said, why? He said, uh, he said, because I've got to be in RTE in the morning. I said, then she's got to be back here tomorrow. He said, doesn't matter. So she, uh, she generally did three or four songs. So she did too, and she was coming off taking her bath. And I said, get in the car. <laughs> and I wish you went to Dublin. And she was only a girl, 14, 15 years of age. A slip of a thing, very tall, very, very slim. A girl, 
She didn't know what it was about. She had no idea. So she went up and Philip had a recording that night, put it out. It was a huge success. And then we had a tour of England. We put her on the show again. And when we all got there, there were several other artists on the bill. So it was sort of an Irish show, touring, touring England. And on the first day, we said, well, I wonder which one of us are going to hit it big. Yeah. And I said, I, my money's on this one. And sure enough, the same BBC producer who had seen her six years earlier, Richard Afton, was at the show in London and he immediately offered her the singing spot on his television programme, Quite Contrary. While it wasn't a surprise that Ruby became a success, what was remarkable was the speed at which it happened. It really did happen overnight in the Quite Contrary programme, which I happened to be watching. And uh, don't forget, BBC One was all we had in those days, so it was, a, it was probably a 20 million audience. She was taken into the kind of the machine that was, that was um, Decca Records, as I recollect. Um, and then she would be in the hands of, of you know, London-based, very professional arrangers, orchestrators, and record producers, and songwriters, etc. So, um, I think that while the record company were very fortunate to have found Ruby, Ruby, I think, was very fortunate that, that from, 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 uh, from Belfast she was transported into an environment where those songs and that expertise was, was readily available. Now, that must have been scary for Ruby, I would say. And I think that's, that's a part of the Ruby Murray story. But I think it's very important, you know, to take into consideration. Here's a very unsophisticated wee girl from the Donegal Road who, in very short order, becomes like a major pop star. The day after her appearance on Quite Contrary, she made her first recording and it was released immediately. While it didn't make much of an impression, the next one did. Three months later, in November 1954, Heartbeat was released and it went straight into the hit parade. And that was just the beginning. Hear it, hear it, hear my heartbeat. The second one I made uh, was Heartbeat, which was the first one to get into the top ten, you know. And they, were, they came into the office and they were hugging me and kissing me and saying, you're in the chart, you're in the chart, and, you know, and I, I said, what, you know, and I said, oh, that's great. But I, yeah, I couldn't hardly understand what was happening to me, you know. As I walked along... She's the only girl in show business that I know of that had five hit records in the top ten at the same time. I mean, that, that, that's a record. The biggest in the world have never done that. Five of them. Well, by any standard, it's pretty astounding to have five records in the top 20 at any one time. I don't think anybody's ever achieved that, and it's for sure nobody will now, because the music business is very different now. If my memory serves me correctly, that they were calculated in those days not only on record sales but on sales of sheet music. Therefore, um, the song was a critical part of the whole equation. After Heartbeat, Softly Softly was released and charted in January. In February, Let Me Go Lover and Happy Days and Lonely Nights also charted. And in March, If Anyone Finds This I Love You completed the quintet. All five were now in the charts together. Out of the five, though, one song will forever be linked with Ruby. Softly, softly, turn the key and open up my heart. Would they be the words? There you are now. Remember a few things from the past. <laughs> <laughs> softly, softly, turn the key and open.
my favourite song of all time, never mind my favourite Ruby song is Softly Softly. I, I, it just is my favourite song because it brings back so many memories of those early days in my career and in her career. And when I hear it, I just have to stop and listen. never played that before but it just shows you how much that song is actually you know in my in my brain that it was just so much part of the whole pop music and and, and the music world at that time that song is it's just in my head from way back then I, I, you know, I've never played that tune before but it is just it's just it was it shows you an idea of, gives you an idea of just how, how all pervading Ruby Murray songs were for her pop songs, but she also recorded dozens of Irish songs in the Hollywood style of the day. Songs like Teddy O'Neill, When Irish Eyes Are Smiling and Danny Boy. And she made many records where she was known as the voice of Ireland. I've seen the mud cabin he danced his wild jigs in as neat a mud cabin as ever was seen. Considering twas used to keep poultry and pigs in, I'm sure you'll allow twas both tidy and clean. But now all around seems so sad and so lonely. So sad and so silent, no piper, no reel, not even the sun through the casement shines cheerily, since I lost my own darling boy, Teddy. A new agency had taken over Ruby's contract and overnight she was being booked with the biggest stars of the day. Frankie Vaughan, Tommy Steele, Tommy Cooper, Harry Seacombe. She starred in the London Palladium for seven months in her first musical show alongside Norman Wisdom. And that also led to a Royal Command performance. But at this stage, Ruby started to be plagued with nerves. The agent that put her into the Palladium right. had uh, booked her in. It's all going to be lovely. They go along to the rehearsals, and of course, half of the Delphont agency then are there: Blue Grade, Bernard Delphont, and so on and so forth. They were the only people in the auditorium, and Ma told me that she couldn't. She went to rehearse, and when she went to sing, nothing came out. So, of course, they're all going, well, what have you done? Well, who have you booked in here? She can't sing. This is the Palladium, you can't do that. And he's going, oh, it's going to be great, it's going to be great. And not a note of rehearsal did she do, but she went out and stormed the show. And, but from that day on, she never could rehearse. Never, ever, ever did a band call. She would always go and do the timing and stuff, but she would never sing. Very superstitious, she was very superstitious. When she played the Palladium, I was there as a, as a guest, and she was on with Norman Wisdom as a young girl. She, she always had this young, nervous look about her, but at the same time, Ruby was a very steely performer. She, she was a total professional. She gave the appearance of being unsure of herself, but deep down, Ruby knew exactly how to handle herself on a stage. He says, tis to better his fortune, he's roving. But what would be gold to the joy I would feel to see him come back to me, honest and loving, 
still poor, but my own darling Teddy O'Neill. Why this feeling? Later in 1955, while Ruby was on a promotional tour in America, she presented Frank Sinatra with the New Musical Express Award, which he had won for Top International Artist. Ruby won the award for Top Female Singer in the same poll. I remember her telling me a story about um, when she went to America, the story about uh, meeting Frank Sinatra and him saying to her, uh, uh, Oh, why are you over here? And she's saying that she was on a, a promotional tour. And he was saying, well, I, I hope you don't have to sing too soon, because he thought she had a cold. <laughs> For the rest of that year and through 1956, Ruby had the most hectic of schedules, comparable with anything that modern day pop stars have to contend with. She was topping the bill in variety up and down the country, and she even had a part in a feature film starring Frankie Howard called A Touch of the Sun. Now, love, your big chance. Get up there and sing. Me? Sing in public? Why not? Have a go. Oh, I couldn't. Where's your Irish spirit? Well, if it'll help the hotel at all, I'll do me best. They call him Pancho Rodriguez O'Malley. Ever since he spent a holiday in Spain He's not Patrick anymore now He calls himself Senor And he's got the tango in his veins When he romances... Over the next couple of years, Ruby had a few more chart successes and continued to top the bill in theatres and variety shows. She did several pantomimes and kept recording. She always remained very down-to-earth. I'll come when you call. It wasn't until um, much later on where she was uh, coming to the end of her singing career that, that um, we, uh, we did some things together, including one in, in, uh, in Belfast. It was a big celebration of, of, of the BBC. And she was, she was um, utterly charming um, and very unaffected, you know, Look, when I was a teenager, Ruby Murray was a major star. Ruby Murray was a kind of a um, Madonna stroke, Britney Spears stroke, whatever, you know. I mean, she was a big, big star. And to be working with her later on, I just find she was, um, she was like any other wee woman from Belfast. Um, I, I find her very endearing, I must say. She had great difficulty accepting the fame thing. Um, she, she and her close friend and pianist, Mary Cunningham, travelled the world, but they were they were always just ordinary people that she didn't really get taken over by fame. Ruby recorded nearly 200 songs in a career that lasted right into the 90s and brought pleasure to millions. You have to wonder though if so much fame at such an early age would be without consequence. Her life was no fairy tale. She had two failed marriages and she never repeated or built on her meteoric success of 1955. She had quite a hard, uh, a hard upbringing, a very uh, working class, quite unforgiving um, upbringing. And because she sang, um, it, it was an escape from that. And, and, and the whole thing became, from a very young age, the whole thing became a, you know, like, wow, look how lovely, look how much attention I get, look how lovely life is. So when she came off stage, she didn't want it to stop. She would talk to the audience and she would stay with them as long as she possibly could, which was partly out of a, 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 a love and respect for her audience and for other people, but also out of a desire for the um, party never to end. But the party did end. Ruby Murray died on December 17th, 1996, of alcohol-related illnesses. The tragedy is that she died so young. She was 61 when she died. And uh, she, the, uh, the, the farewell memorial service in Richview Presbyterian Church was one of the most poignant occasions I've ever attended. I read the lesson, but the... the occasion belonged to Mary Cunningham, her, as I mentioned, her pianist, because she gave a, 
an address. She addressed the audio, the congregation, talked about Ruby most passionately. And then at the very end, uh, after the benediction, she played softly, softly, and she had everybody in tears. And the congregation were filing out, Mary's playing away, and then everybody stopped and started to sing. And uh, it was as, as if Ruby was there. It was quite an occasion. from her musical legacy, her name has gone into the English vernacular as Cockney rhyming slang for a curry. Well, I'm off out. Where are you going? Well, I thought I might go down and have a couple of <laughs> light ales down the Nag Z and then go on to the star of Bengal for a Ruby Murray. <laughs> Coming? And I had to double take, you know, at the TV. I was like, uh -huh. And it took me a moment to fall in because I'd never heard it before. Um, but, you know, obviously from that point onwards, it was, uh, it was an opportunity for me to make the most of it. So, you know, Julie and I are the only two people in the world that can go out for a mum. <laughs> I met Ruby Murray in the 1980s, and her stage presence and sense of fun were incredible, and she still had a brilliant voice. Ruby was one of the very first big-time pop stars with all the trauma and ups and downs that go with that territory. But her record of having five songs in the hit parade at the same time is now unlikely to be beaten. She had one of the best voices of her time and she's greatly missed by friends, family and fans alike. So softly, so She was a wonderful, nice person, a nice, there was, there was a great kindness about her. She loved singing, she loved people, and therein was her connection, you know. But she was a tremendous girl, one of the best, a joy to be with, a joy to be with. Great fun, great company. Couldn't... Phil Campbell Songbirds. CD available now.